So this is it, the Christmas present of all Christmas presents. After a history of thousands of years of blood spilling and political and religious squabbling, and more recently, uh, hundreds of years of oppression under the Ottoman Empire, with the arrival of the Allied forces, a whole new era of the Holy City had begun. In the distance in that direction, we can actually see the mountains of Moab, so the country of Jordan. Underneath that, of course, is the Jordan Valley. Here is the city of Bethany, the Mount of Olives. You can see behind me the Dome of the Rock and the, the temple site. And the invaders always come to the city from the north, northwest, through the mountains. And that is what happened with our allied forces. They came from that direction. And when they came down into the streets, we're told that the Jews, the Christians, and the Arabs heartily welcomed them in the streets as they marched into Jerusalem. It had always been decided that there'd be no fighting around the sacred sites or holy places like this one behind me here, the Wailing Wall. So once the Allied forces had come right up to the doorstep of Jerusalem, the Turks just left. They surrendered the city and went northward into Samaria. Perhaps it's significant that amid the hustle and the bustle of Jerusalem suburbs, a children's playground marks the spot where the holy city was actually surrendered. Apparently early in the morning on the 9th of December 1917, some men from the 60th London Division came into around this spot. They didn't realise that the Turks had left the city and they were met by a delegation from the civil government who surrendered the city and that was it. It was two days later that General Allenby made his official entrance into the city of Jerusalem through this, the Jaffa Gate. And after 90 years, it still looks much the same. The trees are still here, the old buildings, and this grand old hotel. It had been decided that Allenby would walk in on foot as a contrast to the extravagant pomp and ceremony of all the previous conquerors. Also, about 20 years earlier, Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany himself had made a grand old show of his visit to Jerusalem. So there was good reason to show the opposite attitude. Allenby made his way around the corner to hear David's Tower, and a proclamation was read out to say that the Allies would impose martial law as long as was necessary, that lawful business should continue, and that all the sacred sites would be protected. Now it was read out in six different languages, English, French, Italian, Arabic, Hebrew and Russian. They say that even Allenby looked a little bit bored with all the ceremony, but once it was over, they were all back into winning this war. So this is the view from the Mount of Olives. You can see the ancient city wall, above that the Mosque of Omar, just underneath me here is the Garden of Gethsemane and just down there is the ancient city of David. It's an amazing view, but it's not really the view that gets to you. It's the significance of the place. The Bible clearly tells us that Jesus would come here and talk about the city. It even says he wept over it. And if you look just underneath the gate down there, you notice there's numbers and numbers of Muslim graves. And then just down here lining the Mount of Olives are thousands of Jewish graves. They're awaiting their Messiah to come and they'll be the first of the resurrection. But it's also significant that just over here on Mount Scopus, there's also the graves of over 2,500 Allied soldiers. A few days ago in the Beersheba Cemetery, I made the comment the Aussies were part of a, a larger part of a team, a whole group of people who were fighting for this region. When you stand here in the Jerusalem Cemetery, 
you really get the feeling of that. Most of these graves are not Australian, just this section I'm standing in here now. The idea that's a bit of an idea going around Australia at the moment that we deserve some special blessing. I find it hard to understand. Yes, we might have been that star full forward kicking some good goals, but what right does one player have to say that they deserve more glory than the rest of the team? You do it for the team.